Normally when we see a company's balance sheet, we'll see that the inventory account is actually subdivided into three sub-accounts, which are actually raw materials, work in process, and finished goods, which are the basis for this presentation. And I've got an example. It's actually Google. I've got one of their logos here to kind of illustrate that we're talking about Google. It's actually Google Plus. I think, of course, Mark Zuckerberg is very worried about Google Plus uh, overthrowing Facebook as the lead social media uh, tool out there. Not really, but I do have their fourth quarter results, and it is one note out of their entire financial statements that includes their inventories. And as you can see here, raw materials, work in process, and finished goods are listed. The only difference is that raw materials and work in process are grouped together. And I'm going to guess that this is because one of the two accounts is immaterial. So the the account is too small to actually impact a user's decision, so it was grouped up with another similar account to actually uh, combine both of them and comply with the cost-benefit principle, so not including any uh, irrelevant and immaterial figures on the financial statements. But normally it will go raw materials, work in process, and then finished goods and then have total inventory at the end. So let's actually look at the three different types and see what they actually mean. Let me just get rid of these three things and I'll bring up raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. So here we can see that raw materials are materials that are unused materials in production. So very different from direct materials. We'll see that direct materials is not equal to raw materials. We'll come back to that though. Work in process is anything that is used in production. So if we start using materials in production, that's gonna be a part of work in process. If we start using labor and applying it to a product or a job or a cost object, it will be included in work in process. And then finished goods, clearly it is just any goods or any jobs that are finished. So coming back to the direct materials are not equal to raw materials, I said that any materials used in production are work in process. So the direct materials are actually going to be a part of the work in process. That's why it's different between uh, direct materials and raw materials. Raw materials are their own group, which clearly states that they're unused, while the direct materials are actually used and traceable to a product or cost object. So let's use some numbers and go through an example. Let's say that we're the company American Eagle and we've purchased $500,000 of fabric to make some incredibly tight skinny jeans. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to list beginning beginning raw materials and that's going to be let's just say zero for the sake of that and then we'll add purchases so if we purchased five hundred thousand dollars the purchases are going to be added and then we're going to say the available available raw materials are going to be five hundred thousand dollars so put a little equal sign in brackets there. And then we're gonna subtract any, any used raw materials that are added to work in process or part of production. So let's say that $200,000 is used in production. That means we're going to be left with an ending inventory of raw materials of 300,000. So that's gonna go on the balance sheet in the raw materials section. Now this $200,000, I said anything, any raw materials that are used in production are gonna be transferred over to work in process. So this is actually gonna be one of the numbers that are included in work in process. Let's move over to work in process. So work in process, I said that $200,000. So the $200,000, it's actually, going to be part of the direct materials now because work in process is actually subdivided into three things one being 
direct materials, the second one being direct labor, and the third being manufacturing overhead. So in this case, we have $200,000 worth of cost that was allocated or applied to work in process. I'm gonna make up some arbitrary numbers and say that we have $100,000 in direct labor costs and $500,000 in manufacturing overhead. So altogether, that's going to provide us with a balance in our work in process of 800,000. And now the only thing that's going to subtract from our work in process balance is if we finish goods. So let's say that we've we finished we finished $300,000 worth of goods. So we're going to subtract that from the work in process balance and then we'll be left with a work in process balance of 500,000. So altogether, if we were to look at our balance sheet or our inventory section, we would see that the raw materials would be what was it? It was I think 300,000. And then the work in process would be listed below, which would be 500,000. And then the amount that was transferred from work in process to finished goods will be 300,000. And altogether, that's going to be $1,100,000 of inventory. And that's how it's going to be reported on your balance sheet. So pretty simple tutorial. It's pretty straightforward. Hopefully you understood that. Make sure to subscribe and I think we'll be talking about the cost of goods manufactured statement in the next one. See you then. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate. You can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.